At last, the long-awaited project, we get to close in our polytunnel with doors. Before those first frosts arrive. Hi there, welcome back in the workshop. Uh, the weather is just awful outside. Um, it's sort of sleeting rain, um, it's just too cold. And I don't want to do too much on the homestead, in the garden or anything else, because it's just getting too muddy. Even the chickens are starting to make a bit of a mess. I have got time, and I need to do it pretty quickly, because as I said, the weather's kept coming in, to get these polytunnel doors done. Right, I'm gonna get on with it now and see how it goes. I've done my test, and this is how I plan to um, insert the plastic on the, de the frame of the door. So I'm using um, 70 millimeter by 45 millimeter, just under two by three, probably. Um, it's treated wood. This is the wood that I use all the way around the uh, ends of the polytunnel uh, to make the end walls. Uh, it's quite expensive, isn't it? It's now probably 25 euros for a length of uh, five meters. I've got so. very limited stock, so I've got to be very careful for it. So this is just a test piece that I had. What I plan to do is to route a groove down the edge of the frame, basically top, bottom, left and right, not in the middle struts, and then cut a strip from another type of wood, which um, I did use for the door linings, to form a key. Now that key is going to hold the plastic. So I'm going to wrap the plastic across the frame and then insert this key which is one millimetre thinner than the actual um, groove and that will hold it. A couple of um, pin nails, tack tack and that is solid. And then trim off the excess so that will be what I have. So it should be quite a nice finish. It will um, prevent lots of staples everywhere. It will prevent this being wrapped all the way around. The only worry is I'm going to have probably condensation trapped in between the plastic and the wood here, but I would have that anyway if I wrapped it round and um, stapled it all through. So that's my plan. Just to introduce, this is my uh, homemade router table. I've got my small Makita router underneath. Uh, I've got attached up here is um, a vacuum and also underneath is another vacuum. Uh, just made it out of scrap wood. This is a bit of kitchen top, a couple of rails. I bought this little router sort of adapter off uh, Amazon, 10 euro. And uh, I made the, uh, a nice thick 25 mil plywood uh, fence at the back. So I'm using a 14 millimeter router bit and I'm cutting the, the strips of wood to 13 millimeter. And that gives that so it doesn't guillotine the plastic both sides. This is pretty tedious work, but um, I do like the lap joints. It makes a, a really strong joint, plus you can square them up really well. So uh, I'm just gonna keep on cracking at it.
there are in the final pass so I'm just gonna make sure it uh, is the right height using my template There she is. Right. See, I have to do everything. So I've got to go all the way up to the top to replace. Don't be fooled. I have not overcome my fear of heights. I can't look. Oh, you need to get on. Oh. Oh. Thank you. I don't know why I'm saying thank you. Finish it off. It's tea time Finish soon. it off. I've got loads left. Oof. Here's my view. I am so scared of heights. And there's the poly tunnel in the little homestead. So now I'm just putting in um, a small mortise here um, and that's going to allow this wood here to slot in and that's going to be my uh, cross brace and also a kickboard at the, uh, the bottom of the door. So uh, I'm just going to widen that now um, and move my router fence back slightly and that will give me my uh, 20 millimeters here which is the, uh, the thickness of the cross brace wood. So I've put all the parts of the door together. Um, I'm just going to check if it's all square. So, 2048. And this way. Two oh four eight. That's why I like using these uh, lap joints. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier. I have moved it around a tiny bit, but um, it looks all okay now. So what I'm going to do now is just slip these out, glue them, and nail them.
it's time to get the plastic in. Um, I put one coat of uh, saturate on the wood um, to protect all the grooves and everything. So I'm going to cut the plastic, slot it in, and hopefully my idea works. Let's see. This is my idea. I place this into the slot. Like that. And then when that is pulled that way, It'll become nice and taut. I'll put a couple of nails in here just to hold them in. And down the other end. So they're the first two doors, they're the front doors of the polytunnel. Um, I've got the two over the other side just drying off, but uh, that's not bad. The groove and the slotted wood seems to work fine. I'll get those over now, I'll take those with the tractor to the, the field, to the homestead, and get those on. Hi there, we're back on the homestead. It's uh, beautiful and warm today so we're taking advantage of this nice weather after just over a week of snow and ice. Ian's in the background setting everything up ready um, start, we're going to start hanging these doors that he's just been making for the polytunnel right, I better give him a hand otherwise uh, he won't be impressed with me but quick tour round there we go it's beautiful today, actually it's too warm and somewhere in the background floating Freya digging holes on the no dig homestead As well. there's the first door dry fit and they actually fit perfect first time so that's a happy little Ian. I've had 
had these hinges in the polytunnel probably for six months now. So uh, this is a long, long time coming. We're scratching our heads trying to work out the best place for these um, hinges. We'll work it out. What a good way to carry your screws. Mm. Right, so that's the idea. Both um, are just uh, fitted with one screw on each hinge. I'm watching a new uh, channel on YouTube called the Perkins Brothers. They're pretty good and it's going to help us a lot with the new build. But uh, they've got a term they use um, called laser eye. And uh, basically that's what I've had to do around the edges because the polytunnel has settled quite a bit. So um, it's a little warped in the sun. Um, it's a little off plumb. So I've just tried to get uh, an even gap down the center tops and for these to meet up in the middle. So I'm going to uh, finish off putting the screws in and then we'll go off to the hardware store and um, get some hardware. So we've got to get a couple of latches and a couple of dead bolts to uh, hook one of these in permanently. We're on to the second set of doors for the polytunnel and Ian's just checking the main post that's perfectly plumb but this fascia board isn't so he's going to take this fascia board off where the hinges have to attach on get that nice and square and plumb and um, hopefully the doors will be sitting straight. hinge and to put that there we needed just a little packer on this board here and it also helps keep the plastic nice and taut it's so warm in here it's made a huge difference right the latches on this one so this is the side we're working on today doors we have two latches um, one for the top and the bottom and at the moment he's just finding the spot where you can make the hole for the latch to secure through the main beam to hold it so we're only putting this on one door so one door can be fixed It's all right. Now for the bottom one. So I've just made a small hole into the dirt. I am going to um, put in a piece of pipe that this will slot into, but for now, that's fine. That's it, I've put 
the this latch inside so we can get access out um, and the other one is on the outside so we can get access in so that's going to be the main door down that side it just means that if we want to get out and we're already in we don't have to go all the way out and all the way around to open this one up so as long as we know that's the main entrance we'll be fine but uh, as I said on the other door all I've got to do is put run some strips um, door blockers all the way around and that should finish it off but um, for now that will keep the cold out holy moly if you could only feel the difference in temperature in here compared to outside I've got more layers on than I could want today I think I need a swimsuit right okay i'm gonna harvest some peppers because where we have had a little bit of frost i've noticed the leaves have wilted and some of them are going a bit soft so i'm going to take as many as possible today prepare them pop them in the freezer and a bit further on i'll show you we're still actually getting little white flowers so that i think they're still producing peppers i don't know we'll see what happens but Here goes my first ever. Oh, I can't even pull him up. Oh, there it goes. Ah, that's got good roots on him. My first ever cauliflower harvested is my baby. I'm proud of this one. Today's the 21st of December. Just harvested eight huge cauliflowers, and here in France at the moment, they're four euros a piece in the shop of an abundance of broccoli and my basket's full of peppers from the polytunnel and um, we had to sacrifice one little stem of Brussels sprouts because we have a problem with a mole that's managed to um, attack four Brussels so we have a few Brussels we're going to end it here for today and it'll be our last video of the year so for myself and Ian from the French Pyrenees would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas thank you all for following us along on our journey this year 2022 is a very exciting year for us lots of things happening and see you the other side of Christmas don't forget if you enjoy our videos hit the like and subscribe and Merry Christmas <laughs>